Okay, here we are with the third part of module 20. Um, so this one is talking about simplifying the power of i. Now before I do these problems, I like to go over um, what's happening with the powers of i so that when I shortcut this, it'll make sense as to why I'm doing what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is kind of make a table. Okay, i to the zero. No matter what the base is, when you have the base raised to the zero, the answer is just one. Okay, when you get to i to the power one, well, that's just i. When you get to i to the power two, we know that that means i squared, which is negative one. When you get to i cubed, Remember, i cubed can be written as i squared times i, right? i to the 1. And i squared is negative 1, and i to the 1 is just i. So this i cubed can actually just be written as negative i. And if I keep going, i to the 4th, remember, i to the 4th can be written as i squared times i squared, which means negative 1 times negative 1, which just equals um, positive 1. If I do i to the 5th, i to the 5th can be written as um, i squared times i cubed, which means negative 1 times i, well i cubed is equal to negative i, right? So we end up with positive i. Now if you notice, what's happening? 1 i negative 1, negative i, 1, i, you can assume, and if I keep going, it will be the fact. This is going to repeat all over again. So the same four results are going to keep repeating every four terms, okay? So i6 is going to be negative 1, i to the 7th is going to be negative i, i to the 8th is going to be positive 1, and so, so on and so forth i9 will be i, i to the 10th will be negative i, and then i to the um, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, missed a number. I missed negative 1. There we go and then i to the 12th is 1, and so on, okay? So it just keeps repeating over and over and over. So what we do here is, if I were to have i to the 24, I could write that as i to the 4th times i to the 4th times i to the 4th times i to the 4th. How many am I going to need? 6, right? Oops. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if I add up all these exponents, I get 24. Well, I know that this is one, and that 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 is one. And one, a whole bunch of times, still equals one. Okay? But this can be tedious. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to use these first four to figure out these problems. Okay? So I'm going to do the same example, but a different method, okay? What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my exponent, and since this repeats every four terms, I'm going to divide this exponent by four. So four goes into 24 six times, which gives me a remainder of zero. And so what I can say is that my i to the 24th, no matter what that exponent is, is equal to i to its remainder after dividing by 4. And then now I know, according to this chart, it's the only 4 I have to memorize, I know that I'll get 1. It's the same result, right? If you don't believe me, let's try it again, right? Let's do it with this problem, okay? 
So 39 can be written as, you're not gonna wanna do this the higher this number gets. If I give you 200, do you really wanna sit here and do out of the fourth however many times to get to 200? No, right? So the shortcut is really gonna come in handy. So 39 can actually be written as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that would be 32, nine would be 36, and then I would have three left over. So all of these are a bunch of ones, which means I'm gonna have one times I cubed, which is just I cubed. And according to this chart, I cubed is equal to negative I. So that should be the answer. But again, I don't have to break that up. I can use the shortcut. So how many times does four go into 39? Four goes into 39 nine times with the remainder of three. So I to the 39 is equivalent to I to the third. Basically all these ones are not gonna factor in, right? All you're gonna end up with is this last term. So that's essentially what this is jumping to, okay? It's just telling you how many you're gonna have left over. Take out all the fours, what am I gonna end up with at the end? right? Um, and then I cubed according to this chart is negative I. So these are the only four you need to memorize when you're doing powers of I, okay? Then you just take whatever exponent you have, divide it by four, and this expression is actually equal to the same as I to the remainder, okay? And then you use your chart that you memorized to figure out what the final answer is going to be, okay? So now we're gonna get into solving equations. And at first we're starting with the odd roots. Well, we know that in order to get rid of a square, you take the square root, right? It's the same with a cube. If you wanna get rid of a cube, take a cube root. So the cube and the cube root reduce or cancel, and I'm left with cube root of five. There's no cube root of five, and that's not gonna simplify. So this is stuck exactly the way it is, okay? For here, if I apply the cube root to both sides, um, this will become x. This will become negative one times two times three times three. But if you notice, there's not enough. You have to have pairs of three or groups of three in order for something to come out, and I don't have enough. So this is gonna stay stuck as the square root of negative 18. What you can do, though, is the cube root of negative one, and that's just negative one. And so this would be your final answer. I basically took the cube root. Basically what I should have done in this step is no, I cannot take this cube root of 2, and no, I cannot take the cube root of 3 squared, but I can take the cube root of negative 1. Cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. And then you still have those numbers stuck inside, which gives you the 18. And remember, when we have a negative 1 coefficient, we don't have to write the 1. Okay, these are the same thing. Just like in square root, or er, squared equations you have to get the squared term by itself before you can take the square root so same thing here I need to move this 64 over to the other side isolating the term with the cube once a term with the cube is all alone then you can apply the cube root to both sides here the root and the uh, exponent will cancel and here, the cube root of 64 does exist, it's just 4. And then if I keep solving for x, um, I get that x equals 0. Okay, and that is the answer. So x equal to 0 is the answer. Let's try this one.
Now the cube root of 48 may be able to reduce. So 48, um, Forty-eight actually can be reduced. So let me look on my prime factorization. And see what I get for 48. It is um, two, okay, four twos. So two to the power of four times three. Right? So then 3 goes into 4 one time with 1 left over. 3 does not go into that, so it's going to stay inside. And then I end up with 2 cube root of 6. So on this side, I'm going to have 2 times the cube root of 6. Now if I add 3 to both sides, remember these are not like terms. This one has a root attached to it, one does not. So the final here looks a bit weird, but it's positive 3 plus, because this is a positive 2, cube root of 6. So it looks really weird, but it, you can't do anything else with that. You cannot combine the 3 and the 2 because they are not like terms. And that's going to conclude this video. Um, I'll continue with the rest of the module in the next video.